welcome back. I hope you liked that little intro as much as I did. Today we're going to be working on the pause menu of part 3 of my Multimedia Fusion RPG tutorial. The objects you're going to need for this tutorial, one is the I and I object, two the layer object, and three the counter object. We already have one counter in the frame which is going to be the base of the pause menu. The pause menu is a pretty much a retro themed tab menu containing three frames. With the property set as one as the initial value, one as the minimum value, and three as the maximum value. You're going to want to set the initial value of this counter to one, the minimum value to one, but the maximum value to five. To begin, you want to add a portrait where the stats is. And notice how there's four layers as well. You're going to want this portrait to be in layer 2. And let's just keep this selection on layer 2 for now because this is pretty much where the stats are going to be, as well as this is where the items are going to be, and this is where the map is going to be. Let's go back to layer 2. Um. You know me, I'll probably go back in between videos and edit this to make everything look a lot better. But for now, it's going to be our portrait, a crudely drawn stick man with a kind of deformed head, but this will work. We're going to create a string object, and this font is optional. It's just for, um, you know, in, uh, like a retro effect. So it's not something that we have to do. Once we have that in, we're going to start on our first event. At the start of frame, we're going to change the alterable value to name plus, make sure you have a space, colon, and space next to name. We're going to right click on this I and I object, get string of item, the item's name will be name and we'll get into this later most likely on the next video plus gonna add another plus sign here and this um this expression is gonna be pretty long so you might wanna pay close attention you're gonna go to strings then new line plus once again HP for hit points or health points space plus this is where you go back to that I and I object get value of item HP make sure you have quotations around it plus backslash plus once again you're gonna go back here get value item max HP quotations again you're gonna want to copy this before where it says new line all the way up to this plus sign here press control C go back to the end then control V replace all the H's after with M's for magic power or mana power whatever you feel is right for your RPG game Oh, and of course I made a big mistake here. Um, since we're changing alterable string, we need to use the conversion tool. What we're going to do is convert um, these items into strings. So we're going to go about after HP, colon, space, backspace, all of this. Add a plus sign. Click on the two computer looking objects here, convert number to string, get value item, HP in quotations, copy this, plus backslash, plus max HP. Now, 
we can do exactly as we did before well copying it before new line here copy go to the end paste replace all the H's with M's magic power mana power valid expression let's go this is how your menu should look so far pretty decent for now now that all of this is done we're gonna want to move to layer 3 you can also hide layers so they won't get in the way you're gonna start by adding in an active object Oh, sorry with the height of 10 just to fit my font size you have to make sure this active object is going to be the um, same height as the next active object that I'm going to add in um, any basic width will do it's just going to be a black arrow for navigation um, doesn't look even but I don't know I guess we'll have to deal with that then. Yeah, it's pretty good for now. Let's chip off some edges. Oh, another thing. The hot spot has to be here. Right here where this very edge is. I'm going to just click that. Uh, move it about here because it's going to be the second tab for items. You want to clone this active object with the column two move it out just a few pixels and resize this width to about 45 well in my case since the screen is a bit longer um, 190 that'll make a good size I'm just gonna make some basic RPG items. You know, things you'd find in any other game. You want to clone this a good five times. Potion, antidote, um, wow. I wonder what else they have besides potions and antidotes. Um, how about an herb? Kind of going in the Resident Evil direction, but it'll work. Herb. Um, diamond. And the last one will be shield. Or sword, rather. I think a sword would be more fitting the reason I'm making these active objects instead of text is because I mean it's easier to do this to do it this way in my opinion because it's more retro themed and you can also add pictures if you want to but if you choose to do it in strings you're just gonna have to do a a bit of extra work that's pretty much all there is to it <laughs> but we have all that gathered for the items and we're gonna move to the final layer which will be layer 4 you can hide layer 3 as well we can't do much for the map now but I'll be sure to do something about it in between videos for now it's just gonna be this blank you know blue square here that's a line horizontally centered in the frame and we're gonna hide layer 4 go back here what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna make the group titled menu navigation the way this is gonna work is when you press the left arrow it will subtract from the counter also known as the menu base by one. If you move with the right arrow, 
it will add to the counter, aka the menu base. You're also going to want to go back to the start of frame, layer by index visibility, hide layer 2. Well, let's go back and look at it. Layer 2, 3, and 4 is pretty much going to be, you know, stat, items, map. You don't want to hide layer 2. Actually, you're going to want to show that one at first. So you want to hide layer 3, which is going to be items, and hide layer 4, which is map. If the counter is equal to 1, which is the stats tab, limit conditions, only one action when event loops. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to want to show layer 2, but you want to hide the others. Hide layer 3 and hide layer 4. You're going to repeat this three times for each tab, 2 and 3. So you can show layer 3 and hide layer 2. Then you're going to show layer 4 and you're going to hide layer 2. Your menu navigation should work by now. So it looks pretty decent so far. Now for the items. You're going to make another group titled Item Visibility. Oh, sorry. Cam Studio Settings doesn't like me holding down the shift button. Item Visibility and Item Navigation. If this counter is equal to 2, and you move upwards with the joystick, it will subtract from this counter, the one we added in earlier, counter number 2, it will subtract 1 from it. If you move downwards on the joystick while this counter is equal to 2, it will set counter number 2 and it will add to it by 1. In other words, um, it's pretty much controlling the arrow. You're also going to up this position by going to Y coordinate, Y coordinate minus 10, which is the size of the arrow and the size of the um, item names. Then you're going to drag this down here and make it plus 10. Then we're going to make it so that we're going to compare this counter to a value, counter number 2, as long as it's greater than 1 can we move up? We're going to copy this into the next event. We can only move down as long as it's lower than 5. So when we move right, the arrow moves down to each item and it stops even if you continue pressing. Well let's say we don't have these items. This is where item visibility is going to come in. You're going to go to compare two general values, use this I and I object here, get value of item, potion. Let's say you have zero potions. Of course, you don't want it to show up, so if it's lower or equal to zero, the value of the item potion, and this here, active four, will become invisible. Let me just rename all of these just for convenience potion. Antidote. Herb. Diamond. And sword. I'm going to save this really quick 
and we're going to get back into it. Okay, so we're going to copy these, make about five of them. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to change the name to the corresponding item. And you have to be real careful when you're using an INI object because if you make it capital here, it has to be capital from then on till um, the end of the production of the game. So we have an antidote, we have an herb, we have uh, a diamond, and we have a sword. Um, what is this flashing light? Looks like updates want to be installed, and I will get back to that in four hours. <coughs> Anyways, you have to move these to the corresponding items. Make sure they're all lined up correctly. Antidote to antidote, herb to herb, and so on. And since we have zero of all of them, then no items are going to show up. So we pretty much have, you know, an empty tab. 